You are listening to the Daily Talks podcast where my mom, Dali, empowers parents like you with parenting tips. My mom's mission is to help parents make their child raising experience easier and more enjoyable by sharing valuable lessons to in unnecessary struggles. The Daily Talks podcast is for any person already parenting or planning on parenting a child. Each week you'll hear different experts talk with my mom about important aspects of parenting, self-care, and of course her specialized area of bullying awareness and prevention. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, go ahead and do so now wherever you may be listening. And don't forget to set up your alerts so that you don't miss any episodes. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Dali Talks podcast. As always, um, I always try to bring in uh, really interesting speakers. And today I have with me Toby Spears, who is doing an amazing uh, job helping a community that really, really needs some help. But I'm going to have her let you know everything about what it is she's doing. So Toby, welcome to the to the podcast. How are you? Thanks so much for the introduction, Dolly. I'm doing great. Great to be here. Yeah. So Toby, tell us who you are and what it is that you're doing. Well, I am a crazy person who decided that I could start my own nonprofit and <laughs> just go so seamlessly. Um, we just, I fell in love with the country of Guatemala and I just saw so much need and I, I just knew that we could do something and we could make a difference there. Mm -hmm. So I've been working in Guatemala for the last 12 years. Yeah, that's a long time. How did you get started with that? We actually took a little road trip, my family and I, we loaded up in the car. Um, My girls were six and 10 at the time. And my husband and I loaded up in the car and we drove from our home in Pleasant Grove to, we drove through the States and through Mexico and into Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Wow. Was that scary at all? Um, no, I mean, this is like back in the day, right? Like this is before there was GPS. This was before smartphones. Like we, we just, we had paper maps. So I had like these big, huge paper maps and we were just like, you know, asking people along the way, like how many more minutes are we on the right road? Just funny, Mm -hmm. funny adventure, you know, adventure stories. Wow. We had our fair share of, of car troubles and all of the adventures that come into a road trip, but it was worth it for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then, so you, you get to Guatemala and then what, what inspired the nonprofit? What is it that you saw? Yeah, just need. So Guatemala ranges always consistently about the fourth most malnourished country in the world. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't know that they're just like, no, that, that only happens in Africa, you know? Um, and I'm like, no, that actually happens two countries from our borders. Like it happens everywhere. Like, so it's just important to, to know that it does, it does happen so close to, to where we live. Um, and that's the interesting thing about like malnutrition is that it's not starvation. So it's different. So it's like the lack of nutrients and vitamins for your brain and for your body to fully develop which means that kiddos are already disadvantaged academically at the, you know, just from the get-go, from the very beginning of their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so what exactly, or how exactly is it that you're helping the communities there? So we started just basic, you know, like the basic was nutrition, making sure that our kiddos were getting the nutrition that they needed. So word development and IQ development and all of like your language skills, like so much of that is developed before the the kiddo is five years old. Mm -hmm. So we really just wanted to focus on like making a large, a large scale impact on the lives of those, those younger children. Um, I remember doing like reading research from like the Gates foundation that was like, if you, could focus on the children under age five, like the impact you would make is so much greater than if you started at the high school level, because just the, you know, the deficit is so big already. So our focus is nutrition. Our focus is making sure that our kiddos are eating. All of our families have gardens where they're growing their own food. And then we supplement that. So we have sponsors that sponsor a kiddo and they donate every month to sponsor that kiddo. And then 100% of that money goes directly to that, to that family, to the program where that, like the food is being provided every week. So we've got groceries being bought um, every week just so that, the, so that there's food in the home. Wow. So 
nutrition was always like the number one. A lot of people are like, oh, I want to build a school. And I'm like, yeah. So if the kids don't have, you know, food in their bellies, their brains aren't being developed, which means they're not going to grasp what they're being taught in school anyway. So I just felt like it definitely needed to go before education or at least hand in hand. So we started a preschool program and we've had our kiddos in school ever since. So they've been getting their nutrition and their education and English classes and gardening classes. And we've just like really tried hard to implement what we would consider life skills about self, you know, self sustainability, self sufficiency, ways to take care of your own self. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting, you know, we're dealing with a population of people that like ancestrally, their parents don't know how to read and write. Their grandparents are literate, you know, um, the average education for a young girl in the highlands of Guatemala is third grade. Wow. That's so amazing. it's a big deal. So you're, you know, you're talking to a lot of people that don't know, you know, just some, what we would consider some basics. Um, so we're dealing with just the fundamentals and it's been so amazing to watch. It's not just the kiddos that we're working with. It's the family, the whole, you know, the whole unit um, to make sure that the family is thriving and that the family is healthy and happy. Right. So then you always go back to that same community in the Highlands. We have worked in this community specifically for over three years. Mm -hmm. And for 12 years, we've just commute, like we have just helped and supported other NGOs on the ground because they're the ones that like live there and work there and they know the needs. So we are always collaborating with other NGOs that are doing the good work. And then we always, we have different communities that we support. And then one community specifically that all of our kiddos are going to school and getting, getting their meals and we're supporting their families. So yeah, we definitely have, it's been fun. I feel like we sprinkled seeds like around the country, like little seeds of hope. But this time we, you know, with this community specifically, we got to like grow a garden, plant a garden. Mm -hmm. Do you ever go back to the earlier communities and people that you met and see like how they're doing? A hundred percent. Yes. I mean, we stay in contact, you know, that's the beauty of this technological, you know, age, like we can stay in contact all the time. So I get to see how people are doing and stay connected um, you know, we've got friends that we met 12 years ago that we, we taught, you know, we stay in contact with all the time, just making sure. And they've also been able to support us and support the work that we do and champion the work that we do. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely good to have those, have those contacts on the ground. Right. So what do you find uh, most challenging when you're doing this type of work? That's a good question Dolly um I don't know if there's one thing right mm -hmm. nonprofit oh, workers sure. are hiring yeah. um we are always looking for new sponsors we're always brainstorming ways to get corporations involved you know so we're always like on the on the reach out for new corporations or new businesses that want to incorporate service elements into their world into their employee engagement program you know mm -hmm. um and then it's just a matter of like logistics, you know, we've got a lot of kiddos that need a lot of things. And so it's just a matter, it's, you know, like my husband and I have two children, but, um, you know, but we also like oversee the health and wellness of 31 kiddos, you know, so it's just like our family is expanded a little bit, <laughs> a little bit more than we planned. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, do you have a website? Yes. Behumanitarian.org is our website. We've got all, we're all over all the social media where we've got, you know, LinkedIn and TikTok and Instagram. So we're all over the place and we do a newsletter um, once a week, which is, you know, like these are, this isn't like a Wizard of Oz situation. This isn't like, oh, things go on behind the scenes and you don't know about it. This is like, you 
can stay as involved as you want as a sponsor. Like you can be on our Facebook pages and see the kiddos. You know, we've got photos being updated regularly. And so it's like a very like close community mm -hmm. where that, you know, sponsors, it's not like, oh, I get to get an email or, you know, once every six months from, from this organization. Like you can really see sponsors can really see the work we're doing like firsthand. Yeah. Um, so what type of sponsorship are you looking for right now? We have individual sponsors. And so individual sponsor as low as $37 a month, um, up to $111 a month. And that provides one kiddo with all of their breakfasts and their lunches and all of their school supplies and needs. So that also includes English class five hours a week. And just like, they're just soaking it in, you know, like, the families are just thrilled for the opportunity and they are absolutely willing to just work with whatever opportunities we can present to them. Um, and then we've got corporate sponsors, small business sponsors. We've got all sorts of partnership opportunities. So it's really the, you know, it's not a matter of like me setting limitations onto like what kind of partnership would work. It's whatever will work for the the partner, however involved they want to be. If they want to donate, you know, $300 a month, if they want to bring their staff and come to Guatemala with us, we've had business owners that bring their key employees as a team building experience because, you know, when you're traveling, like you're, you're out of your element, you're serving, you're working hard to support a community. Like those are skill, like those are memories and team building experiences that will stay with you for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So it's really just a matter of plugging people in where they want to fit. Right, yeah. So how, how much of the donations go directly to the families? 100%. So we've got, we've got other outside um, sources of income that provide like our, our whatever those are called, you know, maintenance, maintenance fees and website fees. Overhead. Yeah, that's the overhead stuff. So we've got all of that covered. Um, so 100% of the donations go directly to our program, directly to our kiddos. Like for new shoes, when we've got like a little storehouse built that if they need school supplies, you know, they just go and get the, get the school supplies that they need. We also take down thousands of pounds of donations every trip. Um, so we just, we receive donations all the time from like any, like anything you can imagine, but we take down fun stuff too. You know, like if you've ever done service work, you want to do, you want to leave smiles. You want to like, you know, share joy and happiness. So we do fun stuff. We do matchbox cars and like hair bows and sidewalk chalk, like stuff that you can give as a gift instead of just like, oh, here's school supplies. Like the kids are like, oh, thank you, school. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> They're so grateful because you can't go to school without school supplies. But I also just, for me, I just want to leave like something that's a gift. I want to like putting the hair bows in the little girls' hair, such a highlight, like, because you just see their smiles and you see their like the beam, you know, they're just like, so that's just something that's, it's a non-essential, right? Like in a developing country, a family's having a hard time feeding them themselves and feeding their kids, they're not going to worry about hair bows. They're not going to have toys and matchbox cars and, you know, coloring items. It's just, it's just so survival based. So it's fun to be able to like bring that in and, and share some smiles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, um, what about, uh, do you have any stories to share? Like anything um, very memorable that you'd want people to, to, to know about? Truthfully, I think the thing that stands out to me, I've been doing this a long time, um, and there a lot of people haven't traveled to a developing country. So for, it can be like a pretty eye-opening experience. And I think the thing that stands out farthest is that one person can make a difference. And I've had so many volunteers say that over and over throughout the years, like, wow, I did not realize that I really could make a difference, a positive difference in somebody else's life. And so, you know, sometimes it's overwhelming, Dolly, you know, read the news, like 
listen to the news, you're like, Ooh, like this is so much. There's so much need, so much always going on. But if you just choose like, you know, that one project, that one thing that you can support that you can be involved with, then it's just so beautiful to, to see the difference. You can see the kid, kiddos growing. You can see their growth charts. You can see that they're healthier and that they're learning. Um, we just started English classes a couple of weeks ago for all of our kiddos. And I got my first English message sent to me by one of our five-year-old little kiddos. Mm -hmm. And it's just those things. Like I didn't, you know, like it's just like those little things where you're like, okay, like we are making a difference. Like this, it, this is one little kiddo and we're changing his whole life. So right. it's the folk. It's just to stay focused. I think just remember, even if it gets overwhelming that we really are making a difference. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Um, uh, is there, is there something else that you'd like the public to know about when they're donating or, you know, anything, whether it's money or items to your organization yeah truthfully like it's such it's such a need like you know the world is full of need and we have so many opportunities to serve so i would just really be i would love to encourage the listeners to get involved and um, to to find a project that really resonates with them to find something that speaks to them where they can be humanitarian and they can say like oh like i you know, my $37 a month or my $300 a month, I can see where that's going. I can see that it's changing the lives of others. And like, I am thrilled that I have the ability to do that because I think so many times we focus, we focus on like income and the bigger house and the nicer car and the more, the more, the more, especially in this country, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, we say like the one percenters, like those are the top earners. Those are the people that make like the most money. My one percenters are the people that donate 1% of their income, like 1% of their income to somebody else that can make a big difference in their lives. I mean, we're talking about 8 billion people that mm -hmm. live in, you know, developing country situations. And so we've just, we've got lots of work to do. So my my biggest call to action is to get involved, to find something and get involved. Cool. Yeah. Um, again, what is your website? Behumanitarian.org. So it's just B-E. It's a call to action. Be humanitarian. Um, that's, that's my biggest passion is just getting people involved in a corporate responsibility program, like getting companies involved, getting corporations involved getting people involved in making the world a better place. Yeah, I, I love your your initiative because you're right, it's needed. And I think that people really find their purpose when they're in service of others. Um, you mentioned one thing that I'd like to for you to talk a little bit more of, because um, I also see it on your website. It says travel with us. Can you walk us through what that looks like and who would qualify or not qualify to do this? Yeah, we take volunteers to do travel to travel with us multiple times a year. So that's one of the most rewarding experiences um, because you get to like walk on the streets that our community walks in. You get to see the schools that our kiddos go to. You get to see their homes where they're living. So it's very beautiful and eye-opening and we get to like live among our community for a week. So we work just hand, you know, hand side by side. We we get to grow or build gar garden towers for our families. We install wood burning stoves for our families. We deliver donations and provide the schools with school supplies and fun stuff. Like, you know, I'm a big fan of soccer balls and, and fun, fun items that just bring joy to the kiddos. And so then we work alongside each other and really grow together. We've got cultural experience events where we're there for like big holidays during like that are just specific to Guatemala. So um, like they have All Saints Day, they have Holy Week. So they, and they're, you know, traditionally still celebrated the way they were thousands of years ago, which is very cool. 
coming from a country like the United States, that's not even 250 years old to see like cultural experiences that have lived thousands of years, you know, it's just really fun. And then in the fall, we release baby turtles as a part of our conservation efforts. And we support um, sterilization of animals so that, you know, just to clean up the streets and, and to be kind to the animals. So we're, we're really working in all sorts of different faucet, you know, facets. And if somebody has an idea and they are like, Hey, I'd like to like, throw this out there, like throw it out. I'm happy to brainstorm and collaborate with anybody interested in getting involved. Mm, great. That's, that's really good to know. The other thing as you mentioned about um, sponsorships and donations as small as $37. What if somebody right now watching is saying, well, I can't do $37 a month, but maybe I can do five or $10. Is there yeah. a way to still do that? Um, our website, we have a donate button and it's donate once or donate monthly. I have people that really can't donate um, the $37 a month and they are so proud to sponsor what they can afford. You know, we have individuals who donate $15 a month because they know a hundred percent of that goes to support the program and goes to support the kiddos. So yes, if somebody can donate $5 a month, that's $5 a month. And that goes really far. It's, mm -hmm. you know, in a developing country, $5 goes really far. Oh yeah. Some of our moms make $80 a month, mm -hmm. you know, so it goes far. Yeah. Um, what about, um, I saw on your website, it says the International Study Birth and uh, Breath and Death. What is that about? I have collaborated with other women and we, two other business owners, and we have started, this will be, we just had our third annual collaborated trip. And we fill it with people who are interested in studying about birth and death. And so that like birth workers, death workers, hospice care nurses, therapists, social workers, like we have the whole, the whole gamut. And then the the breath part is the fun part. It's the life part, you know? So we do adventure travel and service work and get involved in the countries where we study. So yeah, it's a totally different world and it's full of such amazing people. Um, and so if, is there a way for people to get involved in this? Yeah, we lead trips every single year. I'm one of the co-facilitators. And so we've done trips in Guatemala, Ireland, Mexico, and in June of 2025, we're headed to Puerto Rico. So how far in advance, if I'm interested in any of these, how far in advance should I contact you? Yeah, so you know what? We have trips on our website for 2025 and 2026. Oh, wow. So, and then if you wanted to collaborate, so I've done some fun collaborations. A business owner from New Jersey owns a fair trade store. She just put up flyers and invited her clients, her shoppers to come and join us in Guatemala. And she asked me if I could create a trip just for them. Mm -hmm. Happy to do it. It was such a load of fun. We had such a great group of women and we study, like we went and supported fair trade artisans in Guatemala. So I'm happy to do collaborations. Like these are some of, you know, the most powerful relationships is when you can bring, you know, two different, you know, ideas together and make it flourish. To, so it's beautiful. So if somebody has a group or a following and they're like, hey, I would love to, you know, invite 10 people, they can earn their trip for free by inviting their, you know, their people. And then they get to come and experience the trip and experience the service and, and not have to pay for it. So it is really win-win. Yeah, that sounds great. So if they do have to pay for their own trip, that would mean what airfare, food, lodging, all of it, right? No. So our trips are all inclusive minus airfare. Okay. So, um, like for $21.95, we're in country for eight days, seven nights. And then they would pay for their airfare. And then as soon as they land in the country, everything is taken care of. So all of their meals, all of their transportation, um, museum entrances, donations to the families, like everything is, is taken care of. So they don't have to, you know, it's just nice not to have to worry about, oh, how much do I owe for this? Or 
-hmm. How much do I owe for this? Everything is covered. Right. And then they don't have to speak Spanish either, right? No. I, I mean, I love much. it. <laughs> you know, it's so fun to have to have people try, you know, because mm -hmm. the people are so grateful. They're just like, hola, you know, they just they just say their hellos or their goodbyes or their thank you. So like she, you know, you can just be as involved. We've had fluent Spanish speakers that just love speaking like native to native speakers. Mm -hmm. And then we have individuals who know three words and they just, you know, it's not required in any way. Right. Okay. Awesome. And and you mentioned also like donating certain items. So if they want to donate certain items, is the address uh, mentioned on your website? Or yeah. Okay. And there's, we have all sorts of, I mean, anybody can reach out and commun you know, contact me if they have an idea. We have like boutiques that have items that they don't sell. So it's beneficial for them to get like a big tax write-off instead of selling it as a loss. Mm -hmm. So we have items that are sold that are given to us brand new. We have items that, re you know, that arrive on our doorstep all the time that are donated school supplies or backpacks, you know, just fun gifts like that. Mm -hmm. We have bigger, you know, bigger donations like um, stocks and bonds and like, re you know, retirement plans. Mm -hmm. And when you're, you know, if you've got like your retirement plan past retirement, when you're passing away and you've got your, you know, your legacy planning, like we've got all of that set up. So anyone that wants to get involved, we'd love to love to chat with them. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I see uh, you have a contact section on your webpage on behumanitarian.org. And I'm just going to go run through because one of the things that I liked on there is also the FAQs because there's some questions that I would probably ask because I hear, you know, there's some stereotypes I hear sometimes when traveling. Um, mm -hmm. One of the questions that I like that you have in there is, is it safe to travel to Guatemala? Um, and I know because Oh, my husband's side of the family is from Guatemala. It's one of the safest um, countries to travel to in the United, in the uh, in Central America. Um, and uh, you also have let's see the sponsor a kids sec section, so people can go ahead and donate on there. Um, and then the travel with us section. And I see that you also have a blog. You want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. So one of my board members told me that we needed more words on our website. So we started <laughs> like writing blog posts. We write, we write article, um, articles in news, like in magazine articles. So, you know, that we've got a couple of collaborations with different magazines. Um, and then our blog posts come out twice a month. So mm -hmm. it's just updating on all sorts of topics. And so, yeah, I mean, all of our blogs from the past have been put on our website. So if you have some spare time and you want to do some reading about Be Humanitarian, you'll have lots of information there. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, you know, we've spoken a lot about the donations and the need for nutrition and food. Is there a specific thing that you find every community you go to as you're trickling on your goodness in, oh, in, throughout the country, uh, like the one thing that is always a need aside from food? Yeah. Um, opportunities, employment opportunities. Mm -hmm. So um, I love speaking to businesses that may be interested in, um, have, you know, like collaborating with a local group of artisans. Um, you know, so if you as a business owner, you need something created, you need something made, manufactured, like we have so many very talented artisans and employees, like workers mm -hmm. in Guatemala. Um, it's just a matter of like really having the opportunity that, you know, so what we're working on right now is income opportunity for our moms. So we're helping create a business plan, which means that they're coming up with items that they can do. So things that they can do in their local economy to create income. So we've got all sorts of plans written up, but a hundred percent, I think, the United States is a world of opportunities, and that is not the case for many, 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 most, I would say, especially women and girls. Like, that's just not the, the reality that most women and, and girls face in this world. So opportunity. I would love to encourage businesses to think outside of the box and think how they could support, you know, how they could collaborate with the community in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I think about that all the time as a business owner, because I'm always trying to elevate the populations that I see struggle the most, you know, like women and or single moms. Um, and when it comes to working with people outside of the country, I know for me and like many other businesses, we're so geared towards online type of work, right? Like virtual assistants and th things like that. Are you seeing opportunities for that? Or is it just more like, you know, making things, manufacturing things in the areas where you work with people in Guatemala? Yeah, where we work, it's manufacturing. Um, we don't have like the education as of yet. We don't have the workforce, that the educated workforce, you know, like we don't have computers in homes mm -hmm. or like computer skills in a lot of homes. Like that's not like, that's just not the norm, right? Mm -hmm. um, however, like my, my assistant lives in the Philippines and I have worked with her because she works with a company that elevates people in developing countries. Mm -hmm. um, it's called KJ and it's the most amazing company. They pay their employees five to 10 times what they would make if they were working on the ground. Um, so I think that's the, like, that's the real ask. Like that's the real need is to like, I don't want someone to come to me and say, Hey, I can help you get a virtual assistant and pay them pennies on the dollar. Right. Yeah. That's not going to feed my soul. That's not going to like lift. That's not going to elevate like mm -hmm. what I do. I want someone to say, look, Toby, I'm going to pay her 10 times what she could make like if she was working in the Philippines, if she was working in Guatemala and she's going to get healthcare and benefits and paid time off. I'm like, heck yes. Like mm -hmm. sign me up for that company because I want to be working with companies that treat people like people. So for us right now, manufacturing needs like seamstresses. We've got a sewing center on the ground. We've got so, you know, talented seamstresses. It's just a matter of like not having the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can understand. I can see how challenging it can be to find businesses that are looking for that specific type of work because yeah. so many of us are geared towards having businesses online now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it'd be great if somebody listening right now would say like, hey, I want to help change that over there. Like mm -hmm. I don't know, donate some computers and start some basic computer classes just to get them started. Um, hopefully somebody listening will be inspired to help in some sort of way. But I really appreciate what you're doing because um, you're helping change the world. And like you said, it only takes one person to make a change in somebody else's life. I, I know that that's happened to me. Like I think to everybody, if you start thinking about it, somebody either did something or said something to us that helped us uh, yeah. become or like get to where we are. Um, any last words before we end it? I would just like to thank you. Thanks for inviting me to have this conversation with you and a, just a huge invitation to the listeners to get involved, to be humanitarian, to think about, um, I often talk to businesses about thinking about more than just the paycheck. Think about what you can do with your life in the world with, with, your, with your one life. Yeah. Thank you so much, Toby. I, I really appreciate it. And um, I'd love to hear you know, what you do next. I know that there's always a new project going on right now. You're mm -hmm. focusing on the English classes, which is mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, so yeah, uh, you're always welcome back on the podcast. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. One of the things that uh, Toby and I spoke about after um, the recording ended, after our conversation, you know, for you guys, was uh, about creating custom trips. And uh, I asked her, you know, how far out. And um, so because you know people can lose their motivation if it's like two years out, and or they might forget. So. Um, one of the, the things that she said is it doesn't even have to be a business that brings people together for these trips. It can be a family. So like if you have, if you, you and your kids and your partner um, and your cousins and grandparents even want to go and donate their time, uh, then you can just reach out to her and let her know how many people and when, and she can create this custom trip for you. And then you just, she will help you uh, I guess, come up with like what exactly you want to or how you want to help. So keep that 
keep that as an, as an option, maybe even for like a holiday trip, because, you know, a lot of people are turning away from gifting a physical item, like a tangible gift, and they want an experience. So this could be an amazing opportunity. So thanks again for tuning into the Dali Talks podcast. I hope that you tune in next week again. And remember, um, leave a review. And if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. Thanks for listening. Hey, did you like that episode? If you did, be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you may be listening and write a review. If you want more tips or some behind the scenes videos, make sure to follow my mom at Dolly Talks on Instagram. You can turn on notifications for her posts and stories as well. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. See you next time.